Welcome back to Station Ears. Tonight we're going to be dealing with our solar tracking. And the solar tracking shouldn't actually be that much of a problem. It, the script itself is a lot simpler than we did, or at least if I remember rightly, it's a lot simpler than we did for our satellite tracking last episode. So if you didn't see the tra satellite tracking last episode, please go through and take a look at that. Uh, where is... Uh, that's some cable coil. Oh, we've got some IC circuits coming out, yes. Uh, we are just going to basically be cabling some stuff up first. So we're going to want an IC housing as normal. I've moved the computer over here. So our IC housing can go over here. Uh, it does only have two inputs, so I'm going to line them up just along here and we'll have a little sort of bus bar coming this way with, uh, with our cable. So let's just rotate you around and get our cable connection done. So let's bring you over this way. So we're going to need one memory unit. I'm going to leave all of that infrastructure as is. Okay, we're not going to touch it just yet. All we'll do later is leave the batch writer. That's going to be important. But the math unit is going to be uh, removed and so is that memory unit. So I'm going to have a new memory unit over here because that just means it's uh, simpler for me to cable things up. Uh, you're going to need two logic readers te uh, technically. So I'm going to again um, take away all the existing infrastructure. So we're going to take away the one from over there because I don't have one right now, I'm just going to print off another one because we're just going to reproduce the setup so that it's not going to cause any problems while we're actually doing this. And honestly, this will be a lot simpler than, than you're probably expecting. Um, so let's just do this and uh, we'll just get one uh, sensor kit printed off. And then we also want uh, a logic IO. Logic IO. There we go. And print one of you off as well. Grab this. Not sure why that was invisible, but we've got it. And uh, there we go. Yep. That is interesting. I'm getting some invisible problems. Hmm. Anyway, aside from that, uh, what happens if I drop one? Yeah, maybe I need to reload the game, or maybe it's the current patch. Maybe there's some kind of problem with, with items on the ground. Anyway, as long as they work on the walls, that's fine. So I'm going to drop in a daylight sensor here, and it's going to be at right angles to that one. That's important. Now, we could um, sort of insist that it is on the side towards where the sun is in the sky. So if, if the sun is sort of that direction of straight up, then put it on that side. I'm not going to worry about it to start out with. We'll just actually grab it. And uh, we'll see how, how good or bad this is. Uh, crowbar. Yep, we're going to need that. Yo, there goes my stuff. Um, yep. <laughs> I better not drop anything this episode. And uh, can we actually... We're going to have to cable around this and make sure I don't drop anything. Okay. Uh, let's grab my cutters. And we're just going to cable around this corner. Like that. Okay, and we're just going to connect in. Okay, so we've now got two daylight sensors. And yes, they're both needed. There we go, daylight sensor. If I just grab my tablet for a second, you'll see now the solar angle is actually um, different to this one. This one is showing the solar angle from the horizon upwards. This one is not. It's sort of showing... Uh, pretty much how far off the 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 main sort of angle it is uh, in the other direction so you know how far is this away from um 90 degrees being straight up i think we may have to remove this around just to try this later um but i'm not going to worry about it for now i will leave it as it is um let's just take a look so yeah solar angle 92 degrees fine so we'll leave that alone for now and we may have to move it later so then I just need to cable up. So I'm going to do the off camera so that we get straight to doing the actual script itself. Just connect all the parts as you normally would. And I'm just going to reload the game as well, just in case that will fix our invisible issue. So you need to go over here as well. So we've got one logic reader here and one logic reader here. And uh, just some more cable, I think. Let's just get you there. And there. And then everything else can get connected once once I have this. I'll do the rest off camera. Okay, everything is now cabled and connected, which will be quite straightforward. So let's pop in our circuit and we just need to connect 
a few things up. So first of all, we're just going to connect up this panel vertical. We're going to be using, just to save a memory chip, we're going to be using the device base to be the horizontal angle, okay? The, well, uh, let me just explain. This thing can be tipped up and down, which is the vertical sort of percentage, if you like, so zero through 100%, and then it can be rotated in a certain number of degrees around the base. So uh, this is gonna be the vertical, which we're gonna read by this, which is gonna write, and we're gonna, first of all, gonna do exactly the same thing that we're doing over here with this, but a bit better, okay? So that, that'll be the first thing. Later, we'll then use this to sort of uh, sort of duplicate the horizontal axis as well. So these things are going to rotate around while tracking up and down a little bit for the sun. So we have a solar, horizontal solar angle logic reader, <laughs> a bit of a mouthful, but that's going to be tracking how far off the vertical it is. So if I, over here, this thing reads 96 degrees. Yeah, it's basically, uh, bas when it says 96, it means six degrees sort of that way of, of straight up, basically. And then we've got the vertical tracker as well, which is the existing one. So this is just like this. It's a duplicate. It's going to read this daylight sensor. So we just need to quickly rename the sensors and then we can actually read them. So uh, this is um, vertical daylight sensor. And this is horizontal. Can we actually just attach these directly rather than using a reader? I think we can, you know. So maybe I don't need those readers. Let's see if I can actually connect them directly. So uh, let's just go for vertical sensor first of all. So this might have to be uh, clicking through a few things, but let's see what I've got in here. So solar panels by a lot. Yes, and a panel vertical. No, we, we want the uh, daylight sensor, please. So can we get to that? Horizontal daylight sensor. I'd rather have the vertical one, to be honest, but horizontal one will do. And we'll actually uh, pull in the vertical one here as well. So once we've got the two sensors, we also need to have an output. So the output is going to be uh, just that memory device there, so the panel vertical. And the panel horizontal will use the device base. So let's just get this to the right thing. Um, solar panels, click through all of those. Panel vertical, that's the memory. So this one just needs to be the vertical daylight sensor and we should be done. So let's just go through those. Vertical something, vertical something, greenhouse stuff. I really should put that on a separate network. And are you gonna show me anything? Uh, are you on a separate network? Um, let me just check, I'll do this off camera. Yep, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> It's a bit problematic because of this. I can only connect this in one place. So yeah, let's um, let's just fix that. <laughs> Don't wonder I can't see the thing. Um, and we should have some um, cable in here. Yep, that'll do. And I'm just going to connect this over the... Oh, this battery charger is getting in the way, isn't it? Why not move the battery charger around? That'll make it much easier. So let's just grab this. Are they going to be invisible? Nope. That reloading the game did solve the problem. And let's just get that battery charger out of the way now. And you can come off. There we go. And we'll reconnect that later uh, over here. Let's just put these back so that I don't forget about them. There we go. Three, four. I'm just going to actually print off some nuclear ones soon. But uh, that is... Um, something I'm going to wait for, and then, there we go, cool, so then all we just need to do is connect this corner, and this corner, and we should be able to see it from our existing chips, okay, our chips are all hooked up, and I've got the little readers off, and in the hopes that, in fact, let me just, let me just say it right now, I probably don't need them, so let me just remove them, just to prove it. <laughs> and if I'm wrong, well, you'll soon find out. Anyway, so one integrated circuit, that's fine. What we're going to do, and we've got them connected now, so a horizontal daylight sensor, vertical daylight sensor, and panel vertical. So vertical and panel vertical are the ones we actually want to use first. So we're going to turn this on, and I should be able to see the solar controller. Let me just import that. Yep, it is in blank right now, and that's what we've called it, solar controller. We're going to need to do a few very, very basic bits and pieces. We're going to need to connect these up at the top as normal. So alias, 
Um, let's just see. Um, let's, well, let me actually just look on the functions for a second. Get this the right way around. I always forget. The, yeah, the right way around. There we go. So alias. Um, what was the first one? It's going to be the. Oh, I've forgotten already. Honestly, brains. Today is the horizontal one. I couldn't remember which way around they were. So alias. Uh, H. Um, it's a device. So D H sensor is D zero. Alias the V sensor sensor is the one. And then uh, we're going to have device base as something else. So we can probably do device base as um, what are we going to call it? So H angle DB and alias V angle D2. OK, so that's nice and simple, nice and straightforward. And then we're going to need some internal sort of registers, aren't we? So we're also going to do, um, so I've already used V angle up here. So I'm going to use um, V temp maybe. No, um, RV working. Let's just call them working. That's fine. So R zero and alias R H working R one. Okay. So we've got both of those. So now we can do stuff with them. And I'm just going to confirm that. Export. And then we can just check on the chip itself just to make sure those are right. So that's the H sensor. Yep, that's right. The V sensor and the angle. Okay, so we've got everything that we can work at internally. So now we just need to load stuff into our registers, which is going to be fairly straightforward. Uh, we're going to, so we're going to load into uh, our V working the um dv sensor dv sensor solar angle i'm going to do exactly the same thing for our h working whoops our h working d uh d h sensor solar angle so we've now got access to all that information and it's ready to go step one we're going to reproduce the existing setup exactly. So no change, no improvement. To do that, we're just going to reproduce what this math unit does, which is really easy. It's just one instruction, really. We're going to take um, and we're going to divide. So we're going to divide our H, uh, sorry, our V working, okay, via uh, a number. And up here, uh, I guess we can just put a define up here, I guess. Mm, no, in fact, I'm just going to leave it as is because we're just using a number down there as well. So we're going to divide uh, and store in RV working, RV working again, because that's what we're going to actually form this on, and divide by 1.8. So take the value, divide by 1.8, and store it back in the same value. Seems simple, because it is. And then all we're going to do is store to, um, well, let's just see, it's going to be the V angle. So um, it's going to be the V angle. Setting R V working. Then we're going to yield, and then we're going to jump to loop. At the top up here, we just need to make sure loop begins around here. Okay, so let's confirm this and let's see if that exports anything useful. So on the angle, you'll see right now it should be 18, and if we have a look on the math unit. This is also, uh, well, it's it's identical, basically. The, the two are the same. It's just that I keep having to look left and look right. If I put two displays up, they would show the same number because it's exactly the same. So all I need to do now is to get the batch writer to pull from that lower, that panel vertical, and uh, we should have uh, basically a, a finished thing, at least for the first version. So uh, let me just grab the screwdriver, and we're going to set this to... Um, was it called panel vertical? So input panel vertical, panel vertical, output solar panel, vertical angle. So if I turn you off now, and if I turn you off now, it should still work. These should still be changing. And they are. You can see them shifting right now on screen. So that's all working. Again, with just the one chip now. Okay, well, two. We need a batch writer, but that's only because I want to write all the uh, panels at the same time. So this is our first version. By all means, use this. It will work just fine, and you can then control it later. But there's a bit of an improvement. 
Okay, next version. Unexplain it, there's a few steps. This will work absolutely perfectly if you're on the moon. We're not on the moon, but I'm going to show you anyway. Because <laughs> it'll get us a lot better than what we currently are. So, what we're going to do is, first of all, uh, and just to explain this, let me just confirm this. Let me just show you something. So, on these solar panels, you'll see when it gets to the sunset, which it is right now, they don't go all the way down to zero. The, this post is in the way. They go down to about 15 degrees from, from vertical. And the same thing for dawn. So, we need to correct for those extra 15 degrees at the start and end. I used to do this with a lot of electronics, but right now you can do it quite simply. It takes a few steps, but it's nothing, nothing excessive. Don't panic. Um, Hitchhiker's Guide reference. <laughs> so we're going to take the minimum and store it in this value, just a temporary value called Vmin. What's the minimum between the current uh, solar angle, the vertical solar angle that is, and 15, which is the smaller number. And we're going to take uh, whichever one's the smaller number away from um, the the working thing. So if this, uh, if this solar angle is like 10, it's the smaller number. So we'll take that away and we'll end up with zero. Take it away from itself, you get zero. Whatever it is, if it's below 15, it turns into zero. Okay. If it's above 15, then we take 15 and we take off it. So at dawn, we'll end up with these being just set to zero whenever the solar angle is less than 15. And as soon as it hits 15, they're going to start incrementing. So after that point, we're going to divide by 1.5. This is just basically dealing with now what's remaining. We've got 180 degrees, remember, in a half circle. But we're taking 15 degrees off the start and 15 degrees off the end, so that's 30 degrees. So it needs to now not to transform the solar angle by 1.8, which would turn it into 0 to 100. We need that center segment. So we're taking off 30 degrees. So we're now divided by 1.5 or 150, if you like, if you think about it that way. We're, we're changing 150 degrees of rotation to 100, okay? And then we're going to do the same thing at the end. So whatever's the minimum of the working angle, or 100, well, we're going to yeah, we're going to take that as well. I think that's the right thing. And then we're going to set it to that. So I'm going to confirm, and I'm going to export. And, uh, well, you're not going to see much happening because it's nighttime. <laughs> but it should be following a different sort of track through the sky. So I need to just wait a couple of minutes for it to get to dawn. And you'll see what I mean because you'll see the efficiency value. Remember, we were around about 83, 84% efficiency. Hopefully, this will be better. But it still won't be 100%. We need to have two-axis tracking to do that. And here we are, we're tracking through the day. If you're on the moon, this will probably be really close to 100%. Right now it's 86, so it's getting higher, and it will be even higher when it gets towards sunset because uh, we'll be closer to the actual angle that things should be, and everything should uh, match. However, uh, let's get on to a little bit more. So, the these solar, I've moved it around to, so they're both facing the same way for the moment, because I think there's a new mode or a mode since I last played, which we can sort of deal with. So they're both saying 88 degrees at the moment, because they're both really reading, reading the vertical angle. And in here, I've got these two lines now. These basically set the mode. So in the horizontal sensor uh, case, I'm going to set this to mode to 1. So if I export that for a second, so now the vertical should still be reading 93. It is. The horizontal is saying 8. So this is saying how far off vertical is this? And um, you'll see it is just, just saying 8. And of course we are then reading this back out here. And uh, you'll see it is changing, but it's only a very small change effectively. It may as well just be a floating point value that's just 8 as far as that's concerned. So we're reading that and we know how far off vertical to actually go. So, you're no doubt, if you're not on the moon, you're expecting a spectacular display of trigonometry and maths to actually get the 8 degrees and the uh, the vertical correct. No, we're going to reor reorganise the sensors a little bit so that uh, they give us values that we can use directly, which is, which is much easier. We know that it's 8 degrees off vertical, and if you want to, you can do the trigonometry. If you're interested in seeing that, look in Season 2. I did the whole thing, with, not before we even had these things, I did the whole thing with about like 16 of these chips, uh, all in a long line, and it actually did the job perfectly. But it's, it's terrible. <laughs> It's terrible by by uh, by comparison to, to the way we do it now. So I've got these things working. You'll see the efficiency is 100%. Look at that. It's amazing, isn't it? So how do we get this running? We need to set the sensors a certain way. And now you, they look, they, you know they look like a lamppost, but they're not really a lamppost or a street light, whatever you want to call it. Uh, what we really got is um, 
basically to set this up correctly, we need to look at a certain table. So first of all, you just need to know where's the power output from your um, from your solar panel. In my case, it's pointing west, i.e. towards sunset. So depending on where that is, you're going to want to take. Let's let's just see. Um, Let's just see west. We need to go north. So in our case, that's that direction. So if it's north, you need to point east. So yeah, basically 90 degrees right from wherever the power connection is to your solar panels. Okay, power's on the back. So in my case, going this way. So we want the power connection on the upside down sensor pointing 90 degrees right from this. Okay, and that's the upside down sensor. That's going to be the horizontal sensor. So you need to write mode one to it with your program. We'll do that in a sec. We'll show you that in a second. The other one, put it opposite in it and facing upwards. And that's the vertical sensor. Follow that rule and everything else should be easy as cake, I promise. OK, so all that's going to do is just rig the angles so we don't have to worry about them so much. So in the program, all we're really doing then is going through the loop. So we're going to write to the vertical sensor mode zero. That gives us the vertical angle. And right to the horizontal sensor, mode one, that gives us a horizontal angle. And then we're going to do, as before, we're going to load them into the, the registers. And now, I guess you can even do this on the moon, to be honest. It just would, it probably would just give you exactly the same result, but of course, there's no tilts going on. And then what we're going to do is subtract the vertical working angle from 75. Uh, this is a, a, a more complicated sum if you want to do it another way around, but don't worry about it. If you do it this way around, it shortens your program. And then we're going to divide it by 1.5. And that will get us to the angle we need for vertical. And all we need to do for this, sort of the horizontal one, is just set it to exactly what the sensor is giving us. Nothing else. No sums. Confirm that. Export that. And you will have solar tracking that tracks with 99 to 100% efficiency. And they're all 450 watts. So yeah, I was talking about uh, 10 being safe. Pretty much 100% uh, efficiency. 11 is going to be safe all the time. So yeah, you can have 11 solar panels. But it's probably safe to just keep it to 10. Just because uh, you never want this to actually have a cause. Uh, maybe if a solar flare goes off. Maybe that's one of the new events that can happen. Uh, maybe the solar intensity gets stronger and then uh, then you're in trouble. Yeah, so maybe we've got to deal with that in the future. Regardless, we have perfect solar tracking. So I'll put this program online on a normal paste bin or paste it or whatever I actually get. It's a very simple program, easy for you to just copy and paste in. The only difficulty is this. Make sure this is set up correctly and you're all right. So the upside down one, its power connection, i.e. that direction is heading that way, is 90 degrees right from your power output of your solar panels. Other one is opposite it, facing up and you're done. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that, and we've got really nice solar tracking, which means I can get rid of other stuff. I can get rid of you now. I no longer need you. I do need two batch writers. I can't write to both horizontal and vertical at the same time, so that's unfortunate. And I do need to have those read from two different things. So what I could do... Uh, no, I still need to actually... Yeah, I mean, I've saved one memory chip because I'm using the, the device base here. Uh, let's just go to the, my screwdriver. Yep, I'm using that for one value and then a piece of memory for the other. And then the two batch writers will do the job. So we're down to just three powered chips. And the result of that is actually going to... What's going on there? Have they failed? They failed because I've removed the wrong piece of memory. Uh, No. Something is not right. <laughs> what have I done? Panel vertical. Uh, Fine. Solar controller, horizontal. Hmm, are they not all rigged the same way? They should be feeding exactly the same data. Maybe it's desync because I disconnected the, from the network. Let me just re-export that. Let's see if that's going to correct things. No, these have gone dysfunctional. Yeah, they're all working apart from these two. Are you a bug? You look to be a bug, don't you? Um, they are all connected identically. So that is just really odd. Um, yeah. Maybe I need to investigate that. Let me just check to see if I can fix it. And yeah, just rebuilding them causes them to get fixed. Not sure why, but uh, yeah, that was having some problems. Regardless, no more problems. So everything is working. As such, as the sun goes down, 
Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Give it a thumbs up if you have. We'll see you next episode for some more station news. Feel free to subscribe as you normally would. Click on the bell for notifications for more episodes like this and a perfect sunset to say, as always, guys, thanks for watching.